guys, welcome to another Just Fitness YouTube video. And as promised, here is the next video in our YouTube definition series. Of oh, the better place, draw lanes around me. I seen it from the ground. Talking outside of Queens and the rings of Randy, the cameras in around. Just take the check from the boomer, baby. I know where we are bound. But the hope is that hell frozen, baby. I seem to be unfazing just because the mood is raising. I saw late on dose and mason in more late. I'm the autophagy. Okay, so today we're gonna bring you the three phases that you can use to periodize your program. Now, like we said before, there's a million different ways that you can implement these phases, okay? So the rules are bendable. There are different ways that you can manipulate the acute variables, which is going to be a whole separate video. Um, in order to personalize your phasing. What we are going to do is give you the standards for these three phases, just so you have the basic foundation, just so you can start writing your own programming and start moving through your journey and kind of avoiding the plateaus that you would normally see or maybe pushing through the plateaus that you're already seeing in your program before we get too complex with it. Okay, so the three phases are muscular endurance, hypertrophy, and strength. All right, so let's talk about strength, strength fitness. This is where we get into uh, the fun stuff. Heavier weights, lower reps, get to prove your mojo kind of thing. Uh, and a lot of people might not even do this phase. You know, I didn't even think before we started uh, working out. I never thought about doing five reps or less. Strength is measured by force production against uh, an external resistance. So in this case, that would be the barbell. So this is where you're doing uh, like 85% or more of your one rep max, if you know what that is. And uh, otherwise, just as many reps as you can do um, with a heavier weight in the fives or below. So you can do fives, you can do fours, you can get down even into triples, doubles, and uh, singles, and just do heavy singles. In between each of these reps, uh, we're generally gonna take about three, upwards to three to six minutes of rest. That way you can recover as much as possible before the next set of heavy fives or heavy triples. So this phase, uh, it's, it's really there to kind of take the other two phases that you've done and, and prove your worth with them. This is how you measure if you're getting stronger through your whole workout journey over a long timeline. So you're doing these blocked phases of hypertrophy or muscle endurance or you know, you're going through and each time when you get to your strength phase, you're measuring your strength at its full value. How much weight can you do? And if you get a journal and you write all of this down, then you'll be able to see on a base timeline that you are getting stronger. You'll be able to see that the weight is going up and you'll be able to compare your last strength phase to the one that you're doing currently and show, hey, I'm pushing more weight. And if you're not pushing more weight, then maybe you should look back to your previous programming and see, you know, what were you doing? Why did we not you know, succeed from our previous numbers? Um, and then you know, either go back and not do what you had previously programmed or make modifications to it you know, as a way to become successful for the future. That's really the goal. The goal is to learn how to tell yourself what you're gonna do throughout the process and always get better at it. Not, you know, it's cool you can do this program, you can do that program, but you know, eventually you're gonna run out of programs to buy and you're just gonna have to come up with stuff yourself. And you know, in that case, that's why we want all the proper information, you know, figure out how to get the most out of each phase of working out before you stagnate and then you're working out and you're not really producing anything because you're, you're too adapted to that type of workout. And that way you're able to change you know, move forward and continue to grow as an athlete or, you know, just somebody who exercises. So measure your strength, push heavy weight, take long rest times. All right, muscular endurance. 
this style of training uh, has a lot of different names too. You know, it doesn't have to just be called muscular endurance. That's just what we like to call it. It's also considered you know, circuit style training or hit style training, metabolite phasing. You know, lots of different names. Uh, it's a pretty popular form of exercise. So. You hear the term muscular endurance and you might think, what is that? But it's actually pretty common. It just means like high rep stuff with, with limited to no rest. You know, so your, your hip cardio sessions, things like that. Um, the purpose for this phase, and I think this is kind of where uh, in the general public we kind of mess up how we use a muscular endurance phase because the purpose is really to increase uh, your work capacity. It can be used to burn fat too, which is what a lot of people use it for. You're, like I'm in a muscular endurance phase right now and I'm using it for fat loss, but it's also to increase uh, my cardio uh, and not just like my running cardio, but literally, you know, how many reps can I continually do? You know, if strength is low, heavy weight, one heavy rep, muscular endurance is the furthest other end of that spectrum. So instead of using mechanical tension to drive your hypertrophy or your strength adaptations, you're using sort of different functions of the body like uh, lactic acid buildup and cellular fatigue. Um, you know, and honestly, one thing that you guys always want to know about this sort of stuff is exercise science is not exact. I mean, it's a growing field. So, you know, there's a lot of ideas as to how this kind of works, but there's really not a whole lot of scientific evidence, but there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that we can rely on because people have done this over time. You know? That's why using muscular endurance in your periodization is something that can help, you know, not make your training feel so stagnant. And also, as we talked about, uh, kind of fighting your body's ability to, act, to adapt to what you're doing. And, uh, with muscular endurance, this happens very quickly. This is one of the negatives about muscular endurance style training. And this is the problem if you do these sort of hit style training as your main style of strength training or resistance training in general. If, if it's a muscular endurance all the time, your body adapts to it. So, I mean, can you get, you know, can you get in shape? Can you be fit by doing mainly muscular endurance style training? Uh, yes, you definitely can but it's probably not the most efficient way. Um, really, when you do a muscular endurance phase, you want to kind of be short, quick, get in there, and do it, and then move on to a different phase, you know? So you want to not do it for much longer than three weeks, three to four weeks. It's really great when you haven't been doing it. That's why I'm doing this kind of phase right now. I tend to lean more towards the strength, you know, the higher, the lower rep kind of stuff, you know? That's just something that I enjoy more. It helps me out, so I know that I need to use a phase like muscular endurance uh, to kind of fight my body's adaptation. So I'll do it for about three weeks, you know, I'll take my workout, and you don't even really have to change the movements you do. But say, uh, normally, say you're in a strength phase and you do bench press and you do barbell rows. You can do those exact same movements, but from a muscular endurance standpoint, would be, you're probably gonna do more of eight or above reps. I mean, I usually never go higher than 20. Uh, some people do, so you can. But you're going to probably go higher than eight reps. And uh, the main thing is, you know, after you finish that first set of bench, you're going to set, reset the bar up, put it on the floor, and go right into doing rows, you know. And then you go right into doing some sort of crunch or some sort of pull-up, you know. I'll do three or four movements back-to-back -back in a circuit. Um, and then take about two minutes of rest, you know, to kind of recoup. And then you do it again, and it's another circuit. And these workouts don't have to be long. That's another uh, benefit of muscular endurance is, I mean, you can do, you can pack in uh, two hours worth of work in 30 or 40 minutes. As long as you're getting after it, you're doing good work, and you're taking limited rest time. Uh, in a nutshell, guys, that's pretty much muscular endurance. All right, guys, let's talk hypertrophy. So before we jump into all of the nitty gritty details, let's talk about what hypertrophy means. The definition of hypertrophy is the enlargement of a muscle, the enlargement of an organ or its cells, basically muscle growth. That's what hypertrophy means. So hypertrophy, this phase is a lot about volume and less about weight. As always, when we are lifting or creating a program, designing a program for ourselves, we want to 
progress. We want to grow. So with hypertrophy, the goal is muscle growth. The goal is volume. So you want to stay within the 8 to 12 repetition range. And you would use somewhere in between 65 to 75% of your one rep max. If you don't know what your one rep max is or even what that means, we'll talk about that on a different video, then the easiest way to see this is you would want to be reaching your max amount of repetitions with the weight that you choose at around 8 to 12 repetitions. For example, my overhead press during strength phase, I was overhead pressing 85 to 90 pounds for, you know, two repetitions, I think, or something like that. With hypertrophy, I'm not going to use the same weight, obviously, and my goal is to not drop the weight so low that I'm like, oh yeah, eight is easy. I can do eight repetitions, you know, I'm not even breaking a sweat. The goal is by the eighth repetition, I'm pushing it. I'm close to failure and it's hard. So I think a lot of people, when they think about strength phase, they think like it's just a grind the whole time. And then they think about muscular endurance and hypertrophy is like, oh, that's easier. It's not easier. Technically, none of it is supposed to be easy at all. Um, but you want to make sure that you're picking appropriate weights for these repetition ranges. Uh, another aspect of hypertrophy is your, your rest times. Your rest times are going to be anywhere between, I'd say, probably 60 seconds to two minutes. So a lot of times I will use two minutes for my main compound lifts because those are a little bit more taxing. And then when it comes down to my isolation movements, like my tricep press downs, my curls, my um, chest flies, and things like that, I'm going to bring my rest time down because it's just not as taxing and it brings a little more fatigue to that muscle group. Another aspect of hypertrophy is ideally, you would want to be in a maintenance or surplus with your diet. So that doesn't mean you have to be. I'm currently on week 11 of dieting and I'm starting my hypertrophy phase because obviously I still want to maintain as much muscle mass as possible and I'm not going to skip this phase entirely just because I'm not in a surplus, right? Ideally to build muscle, you need to be in a surplus. Sometimes for beginners, for people who may not have a lot of lifting experience, or maybe you've never done this type of training before, you may have the ability to do what they call, they call it newbie gains. You may have the ability to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. But for most people who are intermediate even in the late beginner stage and on, it gets more and more difficult for that to happen at the same time. So that's why the whole bulking and cutting thing comes in. You need to be in a surplus to gain muscle and you need to be in a deficit to lose fat. So we'll go deeper into all of that um, on a nutrition based episode. Um, I personally love hypertrophy. So right now what I'm doing is I'm doing four days a week. I'm doing a full body setup to where I'm working all muscle groups every day, pretty much. And I feel like the cool part of designing your own program is there are so many variables to mess with and so many things that you can do to personalize your own programming as you continue to experiment with these things. You get to find out how your body reacts and how to get optimal results with your training. I feel like a lot of people tend to ask questions with like, what program are you following? Or what do you eat on the daily? Or how, you know, like where are your calories right now? And while that information can be useful for you to kind of gauge 
I guess where you are in a sense, it really doesn't matter what I'm doing because what I'm doing is working with my body. What you need to do is experiment and work with your body. And that's the whole reason we're doing this series is to inform you and educate you so that you can work with your body and get the optimal results that you're looking for without having to ask everyone else what they're doing. Um, everybody's always gonna be in a different phase at a different time and I really feel like the most important thing that you can do in your journey is be consistent with having fun and making it something that you enjoy doing. And even if you're not one of those people that's just obsessed with fitness and you can't have fun doing it or you don't want to have fun doing it, the least that you can do is personalize it so that you're getting the results that you want. For example, I love isolation movements and there are certain body parts that I would love to see grow to create the shape that I'm looking for. So I'm working my, my quads, my glutes, and my back heavily on this rotation because those are the muscle groups that I wanna see growth in the most. And if there's anything that I've learned during this cut that I've been going through, because again, I'll make the point and we'll probably make this point several times over the next few videos. I'm no guru and I'm no expert. I'm doing this from scratch on my own, all of the research, all of the certifications, all of the stuff that I've been looking into, I'm doing it so that I can learn how to do it for myself, but also so I can educate other people and let them be effective without having to bullshit around, right? So. If there's anything that this cut has taught me, it's that it is going to take so much time and so many cycles to get my body to where I'm envisioning it, envisioning it being in my head. I thought that if I lost 10 pounds at the start of this cut, that, oh man, I would be so happy, it would be golden, my body would be exactly where I wanted it to be, and the truth is, that's not at all what happened. In fact, I have lost to date around 11 pounds and I feel like I'm only halfway. <laughs> if there's anything besides the facts of these phases that you take away from this, we talked about strength, we talked about muscular endurance, we talked about hypertrophy, we talked about how to manipulate the variables in each so that you can maximize your results in each phase. Let's also talk about the length of each phase. I feel like the majority of people that I know tend to run their phases anywhere between four to six weeks before they really stop progressing and start adapting and feel like it's time to move on. I think I did my last strength phase for like eight weeks and my joints were getting achy and I was feeling really fatigued. I was feeling like I couldn't push them any more weight. It was time, it was time for me to move on to a different phase. And you'll get to know your body as you continue to, to experiment and grow these things. So I say, don't get impatient. Write yourself a program or reach out to one of us. We would be more than happy to help you on your way and get you started with your programs. But write something out and then try it for at least four weeks before you start tweaking it. I think it's really important to understand how your body reacts to these movements and the rep ranges and the weight before you start moving things around and shifting it and because then you won't know really how your body reacts if you're constantly changing things. In the beginning of my journey, that's exactly what I did. I would pick a calorie number for a week and then if I didn't see the exact results I wanted from that one week at that calorie number, I would switch. I've since learned my lesson and I've been eating the same calories for weeks now. I've been eating the same foods every single day and I'm seeing better results. Your body needs time to change. And that's the one thing that I feel like you probably don't want to hear. It's going to take consistent time. It's going to take you being patient with the process and I used to hear, I used to hear that just enjoy the process or just stick with it or it's the, it's not the destination, it's the journey. All those little cliches, I would hear them and they went in one ear and out the other. 
and then I finally decided to stick to something for the first time in my life and I'm finally getting the results that I was looking for and it's taken almost two years now for me to actually see some growth. I mean, obviously my body has changed over two years and there's been exponential progress throughout that whole time, but I'm saying it's taken me up to two years to actually start to understand the concepts. So don't be short with yourself, give yourself a little grace. And if this is something that you're truly passionate about, take the time and the effort to learn, to experiment, to try new things. Don't go into the gym and do the same thing with the same weights over and over and over again. You're never going to see results that way. So take these phases, implement these practices, switch it up every four to six weeks and watch your body grow. And on that note, I think we've covered all of our bases. Please, please, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, um, leave a comment below and let us know how we're doing. If there's anything that you disagree with, let us know. We're all on this journey together to grow, to be better, to progress, and to make each other better. So I have no issues at all if you feel like I am giving out the wrong information or if we are hitting a mark. Um, I would love to know so that I can continue to grow and progress myself and in turn make you better too. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share. And I can't wait to see y'all next time for our next edition of the Definition series. Have a wonderful day, guys. And don't forget to get your shit together.